Today we're going to talk about my engine for my autocrosser. So in the last video on my engine here, I had finished dry assembling this thing and measured this, the piston to deck height and said I'll do my calculations and then we'll go from there. Well, I've had a bit of difficulty doing my calculations, had a lot of things going on, couldn't seem to concentrate on it, was getting some confusing numbers. Well, I finally sat down and just said, I'm going to do it. Now, I used to have a computer program that I would do all this on. It was a Dyno 2000. I had taken that program and I had spent hours doing research, plugging numbers in to try to accurately model a stock engine as my starting point. So from all the engineering of what it's supposed to be, the theoretical exact amount down in the bore the pistons are supposed to be, the factory head gasket thickness, the theoretical combustion chamber volumes and all that stuff, which of course they never are exactly that in real life, but I spent a lot of time plugging all that in and using the airflow numbers and stuff from Peter Burgess's book on stock engine or stock heads and was able to accurately model an engine where I come up with 8.8 .8 to 1, which is what these were theoretically supposed to be from 72 and earlier here in the US. And it modeled at 95 horsepower, which is what these were theoretically supposed to be. So once I got to that point, I figured I had really accurately modeled one of these engines and then I would just plug in the changes, like bore size, the actual head gasket thickness of what I'm using, uh, the actual combustion chamber volume, all that stuff to come up with what is my compression ratio actually going to be, and then kind of what does the computer think that the horsepower is going to end up being. Well, that was actually a fairly old program, and it was on an old computer. Actually, it was an old enough computer, I didn't even have CD write rewrite on it, so I couldn't even burn CDs. So the file that I had made modeling one of these engines as my baseline as a backup was actually on three and a half inch floppy. Mm, makes me sound kind of old, doesn't it? Um, well, that computer died. And I no longer have a computer that I can put the CD into to load the program or the three and a half inch floppy to get the information off of. I believe I still have those around, but I have not been able to find them since I moved. So I have been using an online calculator to try to figure this out. And the numbers I'm coming up with don't even, just do not relate at all to what I had on that program. Those programs were keep, kept giving me higher compression numbers than I was expecting to find. So I actually went back and modeled my old engine onto those calculators. Now, when I had modeled this engine, my old engine into the dyno program, it was based on a 40,000 stick head gasket, which is what the best I was ever come up with, what the pay in gasket was supposed to be, which is what I was using. And with my combustion chamber volumes and everything else, I come up with 9.6 something to one. But if I plug all of that information into the online calculators now, it's giving me something more like 9.8. Now, one of the problems with using any of those calculators to calculate these engines is the head gasket itself. These are openings are not round but all of the calculators are based on a round opening. So you have to try to figure out what size to get that volume, where's the volume, what, what is it actually? And in order to get anywhere close to the same numbers I was getting on the other program, I was having to go so big on that where I'm like, that just can't be right. So I haven't been able to quite reconcile where the discrepancy is. Was it in my old calculations on the old program or is it something within the new calculations on the online calculators? And another little monkey wrench that was thrown into this is this is the pan gasket set that I bought or the head gasket from the gasket set that I bought for this engine. And 
and you can see it looks nothing like the pan gaskets that we're used to seeing and that we've been using for the last 20 plus years. They used to always be black instead of green and they had the silicone embedded into it and around all the water ports rather than the copper. And the other problem is, is this is thicker. This is measuring 55 thousandths as it sits. So there's no way the compressed thickness is only going to be 40. So I don't want to use this because then I got cut way more off of here than what I had before. So through all the confusions, all the calculations, I've decided to kind of play it safe and basically build the same thing I had before. That way, if my old calculations were wrong and I was actually closer to 9.8 to 1, then this will be 9.8 to 1, which is close enough. But if the new calculations are wrong and it actually only ends up like 9.6 something to 1, then I'm not really giving up that much. You know, that's not, the, the motor actually before performed very well right up until, you know, it ate some lifters and chewed out all the bearings and all that stuff. But the performance was really good on the motor and I was happy with it. So uh, as long as I'm right in that range, I'll be happy with it again. Now, the other reason why I decided to play it safe is since I started working on this thing and I've been trying to do all the calculations and work all this stuff out, I've started paying attention to my local gas stations. And half the stations around me are only showing 91 as premium instead of 93 like they used to. All these calculations are based on me having 93 octane readily available. So, if I end up a little shy on compression, it makes things a little easier because I and more I'd rather be able to say throw a little bit of 91 in it and get by with it. If I'm out of town somewhere and can't find a station with 93 in it, and I have to put 90 a few gallons of 91 until I can find a nine, some 93 somewhere and just take it easy, I'd rather be able to do that then end up overshooting my target, being higher compression than I think I am, and having a finicky motor with, uh, where I've got to really play with the timing and maybe back it down and not be able to run 91 in it at all. So, yeah, we're going to end up building basically exactly what I had before, except with the bigger cam this time. And um, that's what's going to be. So now that I've worked all that out and made my final decision that, you know, I can go ahead and cut 20 thousands off the deck of this, have this 15 thousands down just like the old motor was, and I'm not going to use the pan gasket. I'm going to buy a Kometic gasket. A little more expensive, but I can buy them in 40 thousands thickness, which is what all my calculations were based on. And I can also get them in 36 thousandths too. So that's the way we're going to go with this. So now I can take this thing back apart, get it up to the machine shop. And then once I get it back from the machine shop, we can start assembling this thing.